everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. We're going to be doing a July garden tour, but it's going to be more of a mini garden tour. We're going to be showing you all of the beautiful things that are in bloom right now at the end of July. It's really hot and um, humid in Massachusetts right now, so this is going to pay tribute to all of the flowers that are really going strong and showing their best performance in a summer heat wave. So here we go. Okay, so right in the front of the house, we have our pink climbing roses blooming. We have showed you guys this in the past, or I think in the, July, in the June garden tour, uh, but they're doing a really good job self-cleaning, nice and full at the top. But what's really awesome is our hibiscus are in bloom right now. Uh, well, at least one of them is. And this one, appropriately, is called Berry Awesome. And what I love about this shot right here is you can actually see the entire life cycle of the hibiscus. So you can see the buds right up here, how they form really small and tight. They start getting bigger, more plump. Then they start very slowly opening up, opening up a little more until they are full. Remember these are dinner plate size, so my hand, my hand will just fit right behind it. But remember, these are also self-cleaning. So right here, you can see what a spent bloom looks like. So this is what's behind the bloom right now. And they just drop that old bloom. They only stay for about a day or so. They just drop it on the ground and they end up disintegrating on the ground. Trust me, it's not that messy actually. What I love is that the spent blooms actually look very similar to blooms. So it's not as though you're missing anything or it looks kind of weird. The spent blooms themselves look like blooms and they actually break off. They look almost as if they were little petals themselves. So this is the Berry Awesome. You can see it's completely all budded up. The one right next to it is Cherry Chocolate and it has more of a pink and white stripe. Now, if you haven't been able to see through the camera, we have a pest problem. Pests are going to be a consistent thing with this video as well. Different kinds of pests than in the June one. So for our hibiscus, they are battling these tiny little green caterpillars that come from, I believe it's a brown moth, I will, put the name on the screen, but you can even see it right here. Here's one. Tiny. Now they do get bigger than that, um, but they're very difficult to see on the leaf because they're so similar. Ah, perfect. Yes. They like to come out at dusk or when the sun starts going down, which is what we're doing. You can spray, we're gonna be spraying, but also you can just pick them off and discard them however you feel like discarding them. Yeah, so that is a really effective way to just get them off. Just pick them off, um, do with them what you need to do, or spray for preventative measures for like eggs and stuff. All right, so we are going to be working. This is a big project because I don't want too much damage to be done with these leaves because we love hibiscus so much. So we're going to be um, doing some maintenance on hibiscus this soon. All right, moving on. So next is our pine tree bed. We have a lot of growth on our purple fountain grass here. Really happy about that. Very fluffy plumes already. It's doing great. And you can see our bank of black-eyed Susans are doing well in full bloom. The Cosmos are 
getting a lot bigger as well. Pushing out, putting on some width. These are Sombrero Blancos from Proven Winners. I'm trying to get a good one. You can tell that the birds have been enjoying these. Oh, here's a good one. I just love the Black Eyed Seasons. buttons. All right. Let's see. Pow wow wildberry echinaceas also from proven winners. These are the pinks. They are continuously blooming and um they're huge even on this side. So we have some of our sunflowers here in the front flower bed. These ones are still battling that weird disease. If it continues, I might pull it. It doesn't seem to be affecting anything else, but they haven't bloomed at all. Uh, these ones obviously have, that one's out of bloom, but more blooms are coming. The Sun Credible Saturns are doing great. The Toucan Canna Corals are doing great on this side. Um, we're gonna, at the very end of this row, pop out so you can see a front shot of the front flower bed and see how these sunflowers are really really performing but you can see our dahlias are in bloom uh, budding up some of them are in bloom really big buds and the tomatoes are insane very different than from the last June tour they've really exploded there's tomatoes everywhere on these plants um, peek in and see the red. Just tons of green tomatoes as well that are ready to ripen. You can peek our snapdragon that's about to, or is blooming. have a dahlia that is in bloom. Oh, look, another one. Mixed in with tomatoes. So we have a, a dahlia right here. These are the dinner plate dahlias. Um, tons of blooms on them, which is really exciting. I'll pop the name of this one on the screen. I don't quite remember what it is, but I'll pop it on the screen. Um, really big blooms. And I'm really excited to make some arrangements with these. This side of the flower bed has totally been overtaken by sunflowers. Our sun credible um, Saturns are engulfed. Same with our toucan corals, cannas on this side. But hopefully when we go to the front of this fence, we'll see them a little bit better. But let's check out the weeping cherry tree. So here we are in our cherry tree bed. Um, the sunflower that you saw had the bees in it that are sleeping, which are so cute. We have our penstemon in bloom again. Our phlox is going to be blooming. It's all budded up right here, but it's starting on the sides. Um, I wanted to show you the uh, at last rose because I feel like they weren't quite in bloom in the June tour, or they're out of bloom in the June tour. So they're just coming back in. Little petite peach orange colored roses that smell really, really good. The fragrance is just amazing on the Atlas roses. And you can see that they're all budded up. They're just continuous bloomers and they look great all season. This Rockin' in the Blue Salvia has gotten a lot bigger than the June Tour when it was still pretty small. But come and peek this shot. So 
so pretty with like the little sunflower rose peeking up. And the Atlas roses, this is another Atlas, they're self-cleaning as well, so they'll just drop all of these petals and then put up new bloom stalks. Look at how happy this sunflower is. It's so beautiful. You cannot see the toucan coral cannas. Oh, look! It's trying so hard to peek out. I hope it blooms right there. That would be pretty popping through the fence. Same thing with our Saturns right here. They're trying, they're trying. Finding any way possible to make an appearance. Check out these tomatoes that have gone through the fence. Insane. We need to do some tomato thinning for sure. Um, people can't even walk. <gasps> but look at all these tomatoes! And then this is another really happy shot with these sunflowers next to our Sunset Horizon roses. Just so pretty. Stop. I wanted to show you our hookra bloom that's in here with those fall colored echinaceas. Oh. And the tulip blooms that I have yet to cut, you guys. But look how delicate and pink these blooms are next to the fall colored. Ooh, and a big orb spider. Ooh. So pretty. I'm happy that the echinaceas are getting enough sun too. So our butterfly bush is also in bloom. I don't think it was in bloom in the June tour. This plant in particular is interesting because it's kind of like a hybrid or like two plants in one because these blooms are very different, not just in color but in growth habit than these ones. These ones are more pinnacle with like the point and these ones are almost like more bottle brush, brushy. Both very beautiful and I cannot tell you how many butterflies, big monarch butterflies have really loved the butterfly bushes this year. So that's super exciting. This is our sage advice Russian sage. This is very different than typical Russian sages that kind of get really big and flop over. This one isn't going to do that. It's super upright and strict in structure and you can absolutely see that here. Um, just straight up and the blooms are so strong on their stalks attracts pollinators like crazy. And now if you just take a peek down the driveway bed, you can see how beautiful of a show these limelight hydrangea standards put out. <laughs> so again, they start in like this lime chartreuse green color and then as they open up, it's almost like an ombre effect with the cream and white as they're opening up. These will then turn a very lime green and then fade into a like rusty pink um, color for the fall fall. And it's beautiful. So you get a very glowy almost show first and then it turns into that really lime color and then that hot pink so fun and they continue all the way down so our 
vegetables are got have gotten a lot bigger. Again, with the tomato pruning, it's going to have to happen. This looks very different than what it did in June. Um, and then our pots, our purple pots, are also doing very well. Alright, so we're in the backyard and I wanted to just show you how the shade bed is filling in. Um, it's filling in quite a bit. I'm noticing just one spot here that isn't really full, but I'm thinking that the coleus is going to fill in at that point. But you can see that almost all of the plants are touching each other, where it was not that case when we planted it at the beginning. Even when they were first planted, there was still a lot of space around them. So I'm really happy to see that they have filled in so nicely, um, especially these and patients. They're doing really well and they look so cute. And this one such a pop of white color from our kitchen window. So nice to see that. In our veggie bed, we had another new pest problem arise. We actually had to pull three of our yellow squashes. We found, we saw one day that they were intact, but just flopped over really weak and upon further inf investigation we saw that the stems at the very base of the plant had that like frass in it and it turns out they're squash borers so squash borers are like these little grub things that bore into your stalks and eat it and leave that like uh, like sawdust um, frass behind so we had to pull them we have, I think, one or two yellow squashes left. Um, so hopefully they make it. There's a whole bunch of things that we can do to remedy it uh, that we're, we're gonna be talking about in another video soon, just to make sure that all of their eggs and stuff don't harbor over. Um, and we're gonna keep a good eye on the rest of them. Speaking of the rest of them, this is a lot bigger than the June video. It has put on so much growth. We've eaten, oh, I don't know, six zucchini already. Probably two yellow squashes, a couple eggplants. Grill them up. Ryan does this really good uh, marinated mixture. Oh, so good. Italian dressing. Slice them up. Grill them. Grill them. Perfect. There's more growing in there, but we won't have to investigate. Let's check out our tomatoes after we thinned them and what has happened since then. Okay, so they're doing amazing. Um, you can see just already the amount of growth that have happened, that has happened since we've pruned them. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted all of this growth to happen up top. Um, so that they get that airflow, they get everything that they need. You can see all of the new ones, and then, oh my gosh, all of these. Snap. Oh, you want a tomato? Ready? Go, go, go. So our Black Eyed Susan Vine arrangement has gotten a lot bigger. It's bushed out so much, it's climbing up and over the pergola. It's becoming almost like a sheer screen. What are those, um, you know when showgirls do their quick changes and then they like pop out through like the little shimmery stuff? No? That's just in my world? Awesome. of that. <laughs> okay. 
anyway, the other one is also doing really well over there. We have one more proven winners. Sombrero Blanc. Did you like that? Did you like that cherry tomato? Yeah, it's so tasty. Um, Echinacea back here. I'm surprised that it does so well. It is kind of floppy because it doesn't get full sun like the other one in the front yard, but it's holding up. So I think that that's great. And then we have our sunflowers. This one is over 12 feet tall. That one's out of bloom and I cannot wait for the sunflower seeds to dry and like form completely um, because I really want the birds to just scatter them everywhere in the yard because I think it would be beautiful to see that happen. But we're just so fortunate to have had all of these just picture perfect sunflowers in almost every space of our yard. Really, really thankful of that this year. And then the very last shot that we can leave you with for this July tour is of our hanging baskets. And you can kind of see all of them at this point. Thank you so much for watching this July tour, this mini tour of what's blooming in our garden. It has been really hot here, so we're really thankful that our plants have been doing so well. We just wanted to show you a little bit of what is thriving in the garden in the hot, hot, dead summer to hopefully give you inspirations on maybe what kinds of plants would do well in your garden during this time as well. So if you liked this video, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, and you can subscribe to our channel for more gardening content. Hope you are having a great weekend, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.